Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Hickey. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for Stealthonomics and would like to introduce you, introduce, welcome you to episode number eight of our Higher Ed CIO Roundtable Series. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about how we augment video surveillance with AI and machine learning. And those of you that have been following our program, you've seen that you know our topics have evolved and we're touching on campus safety a little bit again today, but now we're integrating it with AI. And actually, AI is the direction we're moving with our series, and the next two episodes we'll be talking about that. Um, also, for those of you that are following live, uh, we have one more program this year. We're going to go ahead and take a little bit of break for the holidays, so December 5th, and then the next one will pick up in January 2024. Um, as always, if you're interested in a free cybersecurity threat assessment, let us know. We'd be happy to help check out your systems. Uh, but with that, let's go ahead and bring in the star of our show. John, welcome. All right. Hey, Paul, how's your day? I'm not doing too bad. How about yourself? Looking good, sir. All's good. All's good. Feeling good out here. Excellent. Well, those of you that have seen the program before, you know our, our star, John Norris, CIO for Johnson C. Smith University basically of 20 plus years of IT experience and runs the day-to-day -day operations, taking care of students. Students are number one, right, John? Absolutely. <laughs> Faculty administration for a sprawling urban campus. So again, John, welcome to the show. All right, thank you, thank you, Paul. All right, let me ask, let me start with what I think is a simple one. Um, we, we've talked about campus safety in past episodes. We've touched on certainly a number of uh, IT topics. Now we're throwing some AI in there. Uh, how is AI impacting the way that you're looking at campus? I mean, you know, for my chair here at ChatGPT and other tools, but how is it impacting your day? Well, AI AI has been built and is starting to come into fruition as as the the high level ammunition, the high level tools that allow us to make good on a lot of the promises that we've heard about technology for a very long time. Okay. For a very long time, obviously, you know, AI uh, technology is supposed to make our lives easier. It's supposed to make those routine mundane tasks that we have to do much simpler. Well, AI is the uh, corridor for that. AI and machine learning really does take a lot of the tasks that we normally have to assign man hours to. And those things are done so quickly using this AI and, and uh, machine machine learning uh, just so fast and so quick. And it's most of the times that I've seen is so very accurate uh, because it's really looking at the raw data and putting the story together based on the raw data with very little, if any, uh, feelings or emotions involved. I say very little, if any, because maybe whoever programmed it maybe had some emotions involved. But when it's There's doing its thing, bias to whoever's making it, yep. yeah. When it's doing its thing, though, uh, it's it's quick, uh, it's accurate, it's reliable, and it really does tell the story. So, anything in particular that you found that's helped on JCSU's campus in, in yeah, using well, it? well, what I find, Paul, is we've had lots, lots, and lots of data. But trying to make sense of that data has taken lots and lots of man hours. So well, we want to do a longitudinal look at some of the data to figure out, OK, what's next or what could we be doing better? You know, AI has really played a major part in that. Uh, researchers, you know, don't oftentimes you know, <laughs> want to lean into the AI. But, hey, this allows us to do more research and faster time frame and also allows us to uh be pretty accurate in what we're reporting out. Uh, we were recently looking at evaluating programs of study and whatnot. So we want to look at 10, 15 years worth of data to see what's working, what's not working. Uh, a few years ago, when we looked at doing something like this, just calculating the man hours it was going to take uh, was a daunting task. Today with AI, that's the kind of thing we can do in no term. And from my seat, from the technology point of view, there's all those data points related to technology, interactions with students, interactions with people in and outside of the campus. And how can we, again, use those interactions to paint a full picture and tell the story? 
So right. number one, we know there's value. We know we're spending money in the right places where we should be money. And it's positively impacting our students who are constantly pushing us to, to ask the question, what's next? What are we going to do next? So what can we expect next time? What not? Right. Well, I, I'll tell you this. I timed yeah. it poorly. Just finished my PhD in May. And then over the summer, talking to my advisor, he's like, oh, yeah, well, chat GPT this and chat GPT that. I'm like, yeah. well, you know, it just came too, a little bit too late for me. Uh, yeah. Hey, well, hey, Paul, I, I, think, I think the universities that have decided to lean into things like chat GPT and the such, you know, they really are ahead of the ball game because there is a prevailing thought in higher education. Remember, I kind of mentioned every now and then higher education just moves pretty slowly. The pace at which higher education adopts and moves is very slow compared to other industries. Uh, so there was a lot of fear at the beginning, but now we see a lot of institutions, including our own, are really leaning into it and looking at it as an educational tool as well as an evaluation tool and whatnot. So, hey, I can give you an assignment say, okay, here's how Jet Chat GPT would do it. Let me see how you would make it better or different so that I can't think that it's done by chat GTP. All right. So let me, let me hit you with one more question before we bring in our guest star, uh, or, or sorry, our guest, uh, special guest. We're talking about video surveillance today. Yeah. As you're looking at like human behavior in video feeds, I mean, what are the types of things that JCSU is looking at or, or at individual universities looking at as a predictive tool? Yeah, we're, we're, we're looking at patterns. We're looking at patterns of where people move, where people congregate, where people should be, and maybe more important, where people shouldn't be. Uh, oftentimes, you know, you, you think of this bank of monitors sitting there and somebody trying to look and scan and see a hundred different cameras and what's going on. And if something dr dr dramatic doesn't happen, you may not even you know notice anything. Right. But with AI and it constantly doing some of that looky, looky, looking for you, looky loo is what I meant to say, and also <laughs> alerting you of things, you know, it really does seem to uh, bring the picture clear. Uh, I've seen a system not long ago where, you know, you put in what are the expect a, expected data points, what are expected movements you would want to see, you should see you <laughs> expecting to see right. a line forming here on the left. And if something out of the ordinary happened, of course, it brings that view into, into perspective and you can figure out what's happening. So it allows us to be more proactive right. and have quicker response times. Obviously, campus police and things are all about security and safety for our students and whatnot. And so the more tools we can have in their hands, the more reliable tools, I should say, the better, say for all of us, for all of our students. And things happen at such a quick pace now. I think I mentioned in one, ep one episode some time ago about, you know, some technology out there that will detect gunshots and whatnot. Well, that's fine, you know, but what, ha what do you do with that? Detection. You know, what do you do? Right. How do you get that information up to the right people quickly and get the eyes on where that where those gunshots may have come from? Hopefully it never happens. But, you know, that kind of technology is definitely um, needed. Surveillance is, you know, always a key at a campus, at a, at a university. And again, well, we're in an urban setting. So a lot of stuff happening yeah. all the time. So you got the detection and then you have to convert it into actionable data. Correct. Correct. Oh, correct. Correct. And a lot of stuff going on with vehicles. You know, uh, we, we, we see movement of people a lot, but the movement of vehicles is just as important because, you know, obviously, you know, we want to make sure that the people who are supposed to be here are here and the people who are not allowed to be here or shouldn't be here are not because things just happen so fast, so quickly these days that we just want to keep our that, that proverbial eye in the sky, <laughs> we want to keep that at all times and keep those data points going. All right. Well, I think that's a, that's a perfect lead in. So uh, we'll go ahead and bring in our, our guest speaker and we can talk about some of those things. But, John, if you wouldn't mind sticking around, we'll bring you back for the last segment. I'll be here. All right. Thanks, John. All right. Patrick, welcome to the program. Thank you, Paul. How are you today? I'm doing all right. <clears throat> you know, I think one of the topics, or I think all of the topics on this program is let's bring people who scare Paul. So you're going to tell me some things I know in the next 10 minutes, they're going to scare me again, but that's a common theme as we, as we go forward. But 
Um, allow me to properly introduce you, and then I will turn over the program to you. Thank you. Uh, so Patrick Verdugo, Director of IoT Project Management for Claro Enterprise Solutions. Uh, Claro is a managed IT systems provider delivering scalable solutions with layers of security and global expertise. Uh, over 20 years in cybersecurity, IoT, managed services, and cloud. Patrick specifically, and, and Patrick, you have an amazing uh, bio that I would love to read, but there were a couple things in the uh, the warm up that really got me that I'm going to have to hit on. <laughs> okay. Obviously, he's got over 20 plus years of experience, but been to 68 countries to include Antarctica on jobs um, and worked on IoT, wait, Watson, right? When you won Jeopardy. The Watson IoT platform from IBM Watson actually IoT won platform. Jeopardy. That's correct. Awesome. Early days of AI and machine learning. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get out of your way. Okay. And you have 10 minutes. I'm coming back after 10 minutes and giving you the hook. Thank you. So All welcome, right. everyone. What we're going to do is talk a little bit about uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning based video analytics. The first and most important point is that you can leverage your existing investment. You don't have to buy new cameras. You don't have to buy new network video recorders or video management systems because we add the artificial intelligence and machine learning to any existing video surveillance infrastructure. It is a solution based and it is uh, extremely scalable, so we can handle anything from 10 cameras to 20,000 cameras. I just wanted to set the stage for that. The most important things we do for institutions, for schools, for colleges, for universities, even for private business and public business, is um, a couple of use cases that always sort of bubble to the top because they are the biggest concern in the customer's minds are intrusion detection. Intrusion detection includes perimeter protection. So what you see here is the view of an actual video camera where we have essentially defined a region of interest, which is this red area. And what that red area represents is what we want to monitor. And we don't want persons either going into a school or coming out of the school by crossing the fence. Now, if a bird lands on the fence, it doesn't matter. If a squirrel runs around, again, it doesn't matter. There has to be a person. And if you can see the person with your eyes on that video surveillance camera, the AI can see it, the AI can detect it. The AI can then generate an email alert as well as a push notification alert, which goes to a mobile app that your security personnel can carry and they'll get a view of the alert. They'll get a, a real-time view of what's going on. They'll be able to react. It's all about raising situational awareness. The other thing we can do, you'll notice that this walkway here, this is a, a bicycle pathway and a walkway. There should never be a vehicle driving on here. There should never be a vehicle parked here. So we can, we can actually detect uh, a vehicle. We can say it's, it has to be a vehicle. People can walk around here. Bicycles can go by. Uh, we'll even allow a motorcycle to go by, although, although you can restrict the motorcycle as well. Additionally, we can detect accidents. If, if we are monitoring like an entryway or a parking lot and two vehicles get into a fender bender, we'll be able to generate an alert associated with that particular case. <clears throat> The next uh, important and high on people's minds in terms of security is the ability to detect someone carrying a weapon approaching the facility. So we detect handguns, shotguns, rifles, machine guns, as well as machetes and knives. We can generate a real-time alert. A regular four megapixel camera can see out about 100 yards. So we can hopefully give you enough situational awareness to be able to effect a lockdown or, or to get the alert out or to get the, the, the facility alert and aware that something's going on. We can recognize a brandished gun or a holster gun, as well as these long uh, um, shotguns, rifles, machine guns, and so on. Not only do we notify the appropriate personnel through the push notifications, we can also integrate with alarm systems that may contact, for example, uh, police. 
So if we need to contact police and alert them immediately, we can do so. And we typically recognize uh, weapons within two to three seconds. As soon as we see it, we generate the alert. Very important in terms of campus security or, or facility security. The mobile app is an application that can be loaded onto an iOS or Android platform. And what happens when there's a weapons detection, you get a view of what was captured and what actually caused that weapons detection. In this little picture, you can't see it too well there. This person is actually holding a handgun and here they're pointing with the handgun. This was captured after one second. This was captured after three seconds. The push notification also allows you to access a live view of the camera. It captures the event. It allows you to pinpoint the location. It can even integrate with a floor map so you know which camera picked up this particular event. The other issue is that with video surveillance, you have lots and lots of cameras and typically between 85 and 90% of cameras record 24 hours a day. Sometimes you need to go back and do a forensic search. You can search real time on active cameras, but you can also search video. So from any network video recorder, any video that was actually recorded, I can ingest that video and I can using the artificial intelligence search for a person, for an object or for a vehicle. We recognize over 2,200 different makes and models of vehicles. So you can say, I'm looking for a red Land Rover or a blue BMW or a white Chevrolet. You can get even more specific and say, I want a BMW X4, not just any BMW. Now, the, the, the important thing here is when you're doing a forensic search, when you're going back, you think you may have had an intrusion, you, may, you think uh, you may have had a suspicious vehicle, you need to go search hours and hours of video. It takes on average two and a half hours for a human being to review one hour of video. We can take 120 hours of recording. That's five days of continuous recording and go search for a person, an object or a vehicle and produce results within two seconds accurately with over 95% accuracy. Something else that ought to be mentioned is the fact that when you're looking for a person, you could actually do facial, facial recognition or face recognition anonymously without compromising personal information. We are GDPR compliant. We protect personal information. If there's four people in a frame and I'm looking for somebody who is the suspect or the person I'm looking for, and there's another three people that show up on that picture, on that frame, those people can be automatically blurred out and we can protect their personal information. So it's really, really important to, to understand that facial recognition can be done anonymously without compromising personal information. In general, uh, security personnel can't be looking at all these monitors all the time. And what happens is AI can. So you select the camera and the use case that you want to pay attention to, an intrusion, somebody trying to get in a side door or a back door between certain hours of the day on certain days of the week, as an example, or you want to pay attention to a disgruntled employee coming back to the facility. You don't want them in the facility. You want to pay attention to crowds, people gathering, the density of the crowd. You want to count people coming in, people going out. These are just a few of the use cases that we support. There are undoubtedly a lot more. And in a facility with a couple of thousand people, it's important to keep track of uh, security, safety and security. We can detect abnormal events, people walking in the wrong direction, crowds gathering, crowds dispersing. So there's many, many other use cases that can be used to essentially provide that security. And last but not least, I'd like to mention this is a service. It's a solution. You don't have to do a capital expenditure, invest in hardware. We provide it as a solution, which includes hardware, software, maintenance, and support with a monthly fee based on the number of use cases 
and cameras that you want to apply the technology to. You get a menu, you pick what you want. We provision the solution to fit your needs. When doing searches for objects, you can use simple attributes like color, quantity. If you're looking for a person, you can use gender and age, or you can simply ignore it. So I think with that, we've gotten a little bit of a preview of the capabilities. Thank you, Paul. All right, Patrick, that's amazing stuff. Thank you so much. Uh, can we get bring John back in? You know I'm supposed to be on the bottom. <laughs> Holding these two experts up. I, I am just a carnival barker. Uh, wow, that's some amazing stuff. I mean, that, that 120 hours in two seconds. Yeah. So could you set something up? where let's say, just say you have it set up to run overnight, like like rewind to the old backup tapes you used to do decades ago, to set it up where it automatically searches for a number of set criteria. You're not looking for any specific necessarily, you know, like a license plate, maybe you're looking for like, hey, was there anything going on that we might need to know about later? The AI is constantly looking at the video feed. It is not recording it, because that's the function of the network video recorder. But if it detects the conditions that you're looking for, it generates the alerts. So it is automatic, and it is going to generate the alerts in real time. Got it, got it. All right, John, you heard a lot of yeah. good stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's stuff that I didn't think was uh, available for uh, uh, non-government entities, <laughs> quite frankly. I mean, this is impressive stuff, and uh, I think about some case scenarios, things happen on every college campus. And oftentimes people are uh, trespassed and not and asked to never come back again. Don't show your face. But hey, listen, you're dealing with thousands of people. You can't recognize everyone all the time by sight. Or, or maybe this happened while uh, person X was off duty. And I, now I'm just looking at a small picture to see. But using this AI, this artificial intelligence, looks like it, it could bring me a thousand more eyes. For a hundred more places across campus. Yes, sir. Including the fact that even if the person is wearing a hat, sunglasses, and a full mask covering their face, more than 92% accurate, we can still recognize them. So that yeah. adds a whole new dimension to it, which a Absolutely. human may not catch. This is an incredibly accurate technology. Absolutely. Absolutely. And quite frankly, there are a lot of entry points on ca college campus, you know, uh, and depending on where you got your coverage at, you're just going to miss those with just the naked eye or even just a camera by itself. You won't see it, catch it to later. But adding this layer allows you to almost instantaneously see what's happening and, and provide better layer of protection. One thing I didn't mention, and I will very quickly, we do fire detection, smoke and fire detection indoors and outdoors. Yeah. So if you have a dumpster on fire, a car on fire, a tree that got hit by lightning, yeah, we can actually generate the alerts and even dispatch the fire department if you have an alarm system that can integrate and call and, the fire department. Yeah. Oh, no, that's that's very impressive. And Patrick, I can imagine a CFO, a finance person, Paul, would be happy because this would likely help us with uh, insurance premiums or, or, or being prepared, being more prepared for it because those things still happen. Those things happen, and a lot, oftentimes it's about the responsiveness that makes all the difference in the world. And, yeah. and a system like this does seem to uh, mitigate that greatly. So, no, this is impressive stuff. Uh, and I think I heard you say that with with vehicles, you can get pretty granular to the model and make of vehicle. And, uh, you know, that that that's also, it's, it's hard to believe, but to be on the lookout, be on the lookout, all cars, all cars, be on the lookout for gray, you know, Toyota Camry, you know, is, is a much different thing than saying, you know, I'm looking for a gray sedan, but having these cameras uh, picking up and detecting that in particular is really, really impressive. And you can do license plate recognition, even with a partial license plate. Yeah. So you can go yeah. see if that vehicle has been seen. Additionally, if you see a suspicious vehicle and you don't know what it is, you can ask the system, what kind of vehicle is that? Yeah. And uh, as an example, we had a customer that was trying to identify a pickup truck. Pickup trucks all pretty much look the same from a distance. And it told us it was a Toyota Tundra. It was great. It even gave us the dimensions of the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. And, and just real quickly, uh, I did, I did, we, we kind of, you kind of touched on the fact of uh, recognizing weapons. 
yes, and whatnot. Sir. And man, and isn't that our biggest fear these days is that, you know, folks having weapons in places where they are not just having weapons, but doing stuff with those weapons in places yeah. where we don't expect them to have weapons and stuff. And I think about some of the crowds that you have on a college campus and around a college campus. And to have that kind of technology could go a long way in uh, helping prevent uh, some things that have happened over the past few years yeah. and whatnot. That every every second counts. So the yeah. sooner you can know that something's going on, the more time you have to react. Yeah, and sometimes just the potential of, of it going on as well, you know, because sometimes yeah. uh, someone is, is hot and if you could just get to them and just, you know, start to have a conversation, then maybe that diffuses the situation. So absolutely, absolutely. Without question, absolutely. yes. Yes, sir. Without question. But, but that's interesting what John said about you know just identifying that. So Patrick, the uh, the cameras and the AI will identify unusual behavior. There are some use cases that include unusual behavior. For example, if a crowd is gathering, you know, if it's expected, that's okay. But if it's unexpected, usually something's going on. So we can generate what we call crowd detection. And you can get an alert and you can get a count every five seconds of how many people are clustering together, which could be indicative of a situation, or conversely, how quickly a crowd disperses. And this is used for events. For example, you're having an open house, you're having parents' day at the school, you're having some sort of a, an art show or something, and you're bringing a lot of outsiders into the facility. So keeping an eye on crowds and keeping the density of the crowd in mind is a critically important aspect from a security perspective. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, I'm going to try to avoid the mistake I made last time of getting us uh, too caught on time. Patrick, 30 seconds. Last thoughts. What, what have we missed so far? I think that the important point is, number one, you don't have to make a capital expense. Number two, you can leverage your existing video surveillance infrastructure, regardless of what kind of equipment you have. Number three, um, this is a configurable system that is designed and built to your specification. So if you have 150 cameras, but you really only want to use 50 of those for the AI, you can do so and you, can, and you get to pick from the menu the use cases you want to implement. But you could increase that as you went and, and identified here are some additional behaviors or we want to Without go ahead question. and add these cameras later. Add more cameras, add more use cases in the future, not a problem. And remember, we provide the hardware, software, maintenance and support. If you need to migrate to a bigger appliance because you're adding another 100 cameras, we'll swap them out. That's You don't have to worry about that. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Patrick. John, 30 seconds. Yeah. Last thought. Well, I'm glad Patrick brought that point up of this is as a service because that has been the barrier for a number of years to just getting good video surveillance has been the cost and the idea of having to have those larger and larger servers to save the recorded video and whatnot. Uh, you still have to have the place to record the video, but not having to have additional hardware to do the AI and to do the scanning and intelligence makes a big difference because that's part of the that's part of the issue is that, you know, you just will be chasing after technology forever because this is just going to grow and grow and grow. But being able to get, do this as a service makes a big difference and allows folks to get in at a lower entry point and almost test the orders, test and see how it goes, and then continue to add on to the investment, all in the sake of trying to do what's best for our student body. All right. Fantastic. Patrick, oh, Patrick you got five seconds. One quick comment. We can do a proof of concept if you want to do a proof of concept. Okay. Patrick Verdugo from Claro, thank you so much. And of course, John, the star of our show, thank you so much for joining us. Um, those of you at home, we will have one more episode in 2023 on December 5th. We're taking off for the end of Thanksgiving holidays and then, you know, the um, end of December holidays. And we'll go ahead and pick it up back in 2024. Thanks.